Well, how good is this? I get to make commitments that God gets to fulfill when he's coming. <laughs> I don't get any better. Um, to make this a little less artificial, let me tell you why I'm so funny about this. The main reason is because I can win. And when, when he asked for my support, I said, Doug, you had a shot and you lost. What are you going to do differently? And he said, I learned a lot from that. And I know that I have to be a better candidate. I know I have to be better organized. I know I have to show more passion, more empathy. Uh, I know that I have to be better, and I'm going to be better, and I'm going to dedicate myself to doing it. And when Dr. Seed says he's going to dedicate himself to doing something, he does it, he wins. And I'll tell you why I can say that. Twenty-some years ago, I worked with Dr. in the Tunan administration, back, frankly, in the last glory days of the state of Vermont and environmental policy. This state has lost a lot over the years. Not just the last few, a lot over the years. And you've been writing our reputation for a long, long time. When Dr. Singh was chair of the Natural Resources Committee, we passed Act 78, the solid waste law. We passed the toughest upstream, up, up and stream laws in the country. We passed the law that cleaned up every single leaking underground tank that was contaminating groundwater all over the state. We passed a landmark enforcement bill. We passed Act 200, which we thought and hoped bring sanity to land use planning in the state of Vermont, and on down the line, on every single issue that mattered, Doug Seed was there in the leadership role. He took the hits, he took charge of things, he brought people together, he made things happen, he got things passed. We can do that again. We have to do that again. And I do believe that Doug is the guy to do it. In addition to what I know is a deep environmental ethic that runs through Doug, I know that he sees these as a moral issue. I know that he looks to future generations and asks the question, what's the legacy that we're leaving for the next generations of Vermonters, our kids, our grandkids, and beyond that? I know he feels these things at a deep level, but he's also a seasoned business person. He also knows how to meet a payroll. He knows how to balance a budget. He knows how to make tough decisions. He knows how to plan strategically. He knows how to execute plans that have been made and improve them as they go. So for all of those reasons, I'm solidly behind Doug. I'll tell you what, Vermont would be proud to have any one of these five candidates as governor. But for me, Doug is the one that I'm going to support. Thank you. The current use program is a statement of values. It's not a tax measure. It's not a fiscal measure. It's not a budget balancing measure. It's a statement about our relationship with the landscape of Vermont. That's what it is. The national capital of Vermont is the source of all the wealth, all the jobs, all the enjoyment, all the satisfaction that we get. There are communities, there are places, and places important in Vermont, and current use recognizes that the value of land is not measured by commodity markets. It's not measured by market prices. It's not measured by development value, the highest and best use. The highest and best use of a lot of the land of Vermont is to leave it alone to do what it does so well, which is to provide what we academics like to call academic certain ecosystem services, what the normal people would call clean air, clean water, habitat, healthy fish, healthy wildlife, carbon sequestration, aesthetic value, recreational value, tourism, all the rest of that. And current use is a reflection of those values. The report that uh, Secretary Markham was mentioned that the good people in this room developed in September of this year recommended eight specific measures to improve and make the current use more efficient. I think those are a good starting point. I'm not an expert on any of those. They need to be vetted. They may not be the absolute answer, but they're a darn good starting place. But don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Current use is keeping Vermont Vermont. We have to have the housing and conservation fund. Again, you, you don't get environmental quality by accident. You don't preserve and protect and maintain the beauty, the functionality, the integrity of the natural world by sitting there and watching it. You have to make investments in environmental quality the same way you would in any other enterprise, social business or otherwise. That's what the housing and conservation Board does. It needs to be funded and it needs to be fully funded. And we're going to need more of that. Our communities are going to be under increasing pressure when the climate change 
question comes up, I'll go into more detail on that. But we need to have a more focus on communities that are attractive, that are compact, that have everything they need nearby, that are healthy in every way, shape, and form, that aren't little with pollution and stormwater runoff and excess traffic and sprawl and all the rest of that. Every one of these mechanisms, current use, the Housing and Conservation Board, these are the policy instruments, these are the actions and investments that we have to take so that we have those good things in Vermont. We've got, because the uh, current administration did not act on the recommendations that the Public Service Board then shared by my colleague Michael Dworkin made uh, back in, in 2004, I believe it was, or six, uh, which laid out a clear blueprint for how you transition out of Vermont Yankee. One, two, three, four, five, six. A multi-step process for how you become more efficient, bring on renewables, and back out Vermont Yankee, and frankly, back out fossil fuels altogether. Those recommendations are lying there gathering dust. And so we've lost that opportunity, so now we're facing some tough transitions. Clearly there's surplus power in the New England market. Most of it is going to be gas. Gas is better than coal. Gas is not the answer. But we have now to run and sprint to catch up with where we really ought to be on energy policy. You don't get energy policy right, you don't get anything right. You don't get climate change right, you don't get land use right, you don't get transportation right, you don't get anything right. So we've got to get environmental policy right. In the short run, I'm afraid it means having to import some sources of energy that aren't ideal. In the long run, though, the vision that I know Doug was seeing has, and that we all should have, is a truly energy independent Vermont. We can do that. We can produce the energy we need right here in this state without having to import any kind of fossil fuel or other bad sources of energy at all. 